Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta. This is something many of you have asked. How to use noise gates and how I use them and, you know, all the whatever goes with those. So, there's three noise gates I've been using my entire career. Bus NS2. It's a classic, you know. My first noise gate, both this early 90s. Then ISP decimator. I don't think they make this anymore, but you know, there's many similar nowadays. And then my latest, which I've been using a lot the past couple of years, is uh, Forin's Azul. The differences between these two is the NS2. It's a classic. It has a threshold. So, you know, how, uh, kind of like on the compressor, you know, what is the level that the signal needs to reach before the noise gates kick in? And then the decay with this one is how it's like, a, you know, really is on a compressor, how fast it go, goes back. So if you feel that it cuts too quickly, like then you can kind of increase the sustain so that it goes smoother. And then there's a reduction and a mute switch. Well, the mute switch basically like mute the signal, which is something maybe you want to do sometimes. What is cool with these also, there's a, this can power other pedals too. Okay, so this is a, like all bus pedals, it's a buffered bypass. So even when it's off, if it's off, it, it, it adds a little bit to the sound. But I think it, it uh, so I like real like bus pedals. I think this, what it does to the sound, it adds tiny, tiny amount of low end and high end. I, I've used this on many albums sometimes just because of that. So it changes the sound a bit, but I think it changes it better. But, you know, those are personal opinions, preferences. The decimator, it, it has all, all, only a threshold knob. So the decay is kind of, I think it's like a related to the to the threshold, the tighter the threshold, the, the, the you know, shorter the decay and, and vice versa. And then the Zool, this is probably, I'm going to say it already now, the best noise gate I've ever used and the most versatile. The thing is with this one, it has a key input. So no matter if you have lots of gain, clean sound, whatever, the threshold of the gate is triggered by your direct sound. So you don't have to kind of set it these two different. Because with these ones, sometimes, you know, if you set, set this that it works really well with high gain, then when you roll back the volume and want to do maybe some, you know, mildly distorted or clean tones, it can cut the signal or decrease the, the sustain in an unpleasant way. But this doesn't. So it, it triggers here and then here's your normal in and out. And with the bus, there's a loop option. So you can, you know, signal here, then send maybe all your overdrive or distortion pedals in the loop and then back from the reacher and then output. So it's a way, it's a bit even more effective that way. I haven't really used it that way. I've, I've used it uh, like I will show you soon. So these work either in front of an amp, like I use them, or then in the loop. But we'll go through both ways of using a noise gate. All right, the signal chain. One of my signature ESPs, this used to be the Shining guitar with the Shining logo. Well, the logo is still there, but since I haven't played any Shining since 2017, I put stickers. So this is nicknamed as stickers nowadays. Cable goes to the input of a tuner. Then the bypass out, which is a clean signal, like I said just before, from the guitar, it goes to the key input of the Zool. So the threshold of the Zool is triggered by just a clean DI signal. Cool. Then the normal output, it goes to the wah, -wah and from the wah, wah it goes to the input of the looper. So the wah, wah isn't in the looper. Then I have six different loops. Phaser is on the loop one, because that's also the order of the pedal. So I like phaser after wah, wah and before overdrives. 
Loop number two, which is the second in order, is SD1. Then it's a screamer. Then it's a Sonic Cakes root mouse, which is a rat. That's in the loop four. In the loop five is the bus noise suppressor. It says here. Now it's off. Now it's on. Then in the loop six, the last loop is the decimator on off. It's just five, but it's just the bottom five. It's in the loop six. Then it goes out from the looper to this booster, which I don't use that much. It's just there if I want to add just a little bit transparent boost to whatever sound or signal I'm using. From the booster out goes to the input of the Zool and from the output of the Zool it goes to the KHE electronics amp switcher. And then from that it goes to the Marshall JCM head on it. So if I wouldn't have that, then the signal would go directly to the JCM 800. So the Zool is the last thing. So it, it reduces all the possible noise from the pedals, because it's the last. I've always used noise gate as the last on my pedal board if I don't have delays or reverbs on my board, which I usually don't. So those, one, those ones would be the last, because if the gate is after delay, it will obviously cut the delay tails, the repeats. Same with the reverb. So if there will be delays or reverbs, they will be after the gate. So the gate is just reducing noise, whatever these pedals are created. Mostly the noise comes from overdrive pedals and distortions. Cool. So they're all in front of the amp. The amp. It's basic JZM800. This cool, crunchy ACM JZM800 bar. The preamp is maxed, so 800 doesn't have that much gain. But then when you add overdrive, in my case SD, you know, the drive barely open. Check out. Gun, the mean machines we all know and love, at least me. <laughs> okay, from the amplifier, the signal goes to Sandrox React IR, reactive load slash cab attenuator, but I'm only using the, the cab attenuator portion. So we just change the signal because the master is, is at four, so it's quite loud. I'm just changing it a little bit before it hits the, the cabinet. So this way I'm able to get the power amp a little bit power amp distortion and that, you know, mojo that tube amps, especially Marshalls and these older type of Marshalls. I mean, this is a reissue. It's a Zach Wildhead from 2005, but it's, you know, like these, these are from early 80s. Basically the same, but this has an effect loop and these don't. So, yeah, to the cabinet, which is a uh, you know, basic Marshall 960 BX, and I have their Greenbacks and V30s, Celestin elements. Now the microphones, which are SM57 and SE Electronics VR1 ribbon microphone. They are in front of a vintage 30 speaker. Well, that's the signal chain. As you can hear, I have the SD on. It's dead quiet. If I take the gate off, So you can see the, the threshold is minimum. So I'm only using the gate to reduce the noise. If I would want it to act, so it's pretty much like a noise reduction. If I would, that it acts like a gate, you know, that really modern, I would just turn it a little bit more up. So it's really fast, but I, I like to use it like... To me, the noise, it's part of the charm with tube amps. It's like, you know, when you're mixing, there's many plugins, distortion plugins, you know, if you work inside a box in DAW to create analog mojo, you know, any of those plugins, they add a little bit noise to the background. 
it's just pleasant to us human beings to hear that. And that's part of the tube amps character. So they're not clean. They're not, there's, sometimes there's more noise, sometimes there's less noise. Some amps are noisier than others. The bad boy, it's really noisy. There's this, but that hike, it's part of the sound. So I don't want to, you know, tame the amps too much, just to get rid of the, this. And because the key input of the Zool, if I take the SD off and roll down the volume, it doesn't cut anything. You see the light there, now it's closed. When I barely touch this, it opens. Because the threshold, the behavior of the gate is triggered by a clean DI sound from the tuner. So with this one, you would need a, either a tuner, pretty much everybody has a bus TU2 or TU3 nowadays, or ABI box or Ford makes a splitter box. I think the new Zool, the new version, I think it has a key in and key out. So you don't need any more an extra pedal. So you put key in and then key out to, you know, let's say to, in my case, the walk to the first pedal. And then these will be the, the last, so that the gate will be last to get rid of the noise. And it's really powerful. SD on, GS on. Now it added a little bit noise when I have three overdrives, but let I can make it dead quiet. Now you obviously hear the noise because it opens when I play, but this is so powerful, this game. So that's the way. Okay, then let's check out the... Let's bypass the foreign. Again, noise. Now I increase the NS2. It does the trick. There's the... So if I put this DK to max, it slowly cuts the noise. And if it's fully minimum, it's really fast. But I think it's, it's a little bit too much. I kind of like to have it around here that... You get the it's part of the two amp, two amp sound, the whoosh, whoosh, what I call it. But many people prefer dead silent stuff, I don't. And then the threshold is, how I said, said this, I turn it clockwise until the noise disappears. There. Like that. Check out what happens when I engage the tears and the breath. So even at max settings, the NS2 can handle that. But I could, I don't see a solution, you know, solution or. I don't see myself using three overdrives in a row, but sometimes maybe you would like to do that, then the end is two doesn't work. I mean, this is a, maybe this was released in the late 80s, early 90s, but I kind of remember when this came out, it was kind of revolutionary. So to me, this is the first noise suppressor pedal ever. It still works. It does the job. And if we compare, you know, what it adds, adds to the sound, so now NS2 with SD. NS2 off, Zool on. I don't hear a difference, but there is think if you really listen with, with, you know, headphones and stuff, it adds a little bit, but I think it's only positive, whatever it adds, because more is more. <laughs> okay, then, zoom off. 
Again, we have noise. Then the NS, the ISP decimator, which is in the loop here. And what I do with this, I turn it up until the noise disappears. There. So this has an automatic decay. As you hear, heard, there was a little bit, and then when if I put it really, and now it's too much, it doesn't let the signal go through. Now the decay is shorter. So, you know, the more tighter the gate, the more threshold, you know, it does pretty much this automatically. That's the way I use noise gates, because like you heard, no noise gate on, there's a little bit of hum. But the amp, since I don't use that much gain from the amp, so whether it's a 5150 or the 3 amp gain is two and a half, and the normal gain input. So I usually use the smallest amount of gain as I dare, because that makes just the sound bigger and punchier. Too much gain, it's just gonna be, you know, group of bees. Bzzz and really noisy. But that's just me. Obviously, it's a bit harder to play. But, you know, practice, practice, practice. If you want to sound good, you have to, play, you have to play good. Cool. So, that's how I use it. In front of an amp, after all the pedals, except delays and reverbs. Why I don't have delays and reverbs here in front? Well, with clean amps, they work really well, but uh, with distortion, if the amp gets a delay, that signal, it will distort the delays too, so it sounds really, well, interesting. Sometimes it's usable if you want to really create like these kind of sounds, or then if you just add it so that it's barely on, so it just adds a tiny amount of this effect, then it, it could work. But with these amps, they don't have effect loop. When I used these live, I didn't have, I didn't use delay. You know, it was all bone dry. Our front of house mix, mixing engineer just added some delays to the solos, if he felt so. But to the, the sound to the stage, to me, bone dry. Cool. Now, let me show you another thing. If you use a lot of gain from the amps so that they are really noisy. Then it will be a cool thing to put the pedals, the noise suppressors, into the effect loop. And I'm gonna show you that now. The disadvantage for me is that it's gonna be more cables, because then if you wanna control that, if you don't have a, well, if you have a Ford in Zool, you can leave it on, it's there. But if you have a regular noise gate, Sometimes you might want to press that off when you're, you know, lowering your volume. So it's like, oh, it's cutting. Then if it's in the loop, you know, you want to have that on your pedal board and you don't have a tech, tech who does the switching, then it's again another two long cables from the loop to the front of the stage where your pedal board is. Too much hassle to me. But I know many people use that and many people use both in front and in the effect loop. But I guess they have a lot of gain because I've never been in a situation where... I mean, I played many years without a gate. My gate was this, the volume. That's why, I don't know if you noticed, but I, when I play, my hand is constantly on the volume knob. It comes from that when we didn't have noise gates. So now there's no noise gate. That's more his, and the band is pounding, playing, not audible. But it's, you know, nice to have a gate like this. Then you don't necessarily have to do it, but I think I, I do it anyways, because I'm used to playing like that, you know, when I started. No noise gates, just noise, loud noise and music. All right, let me put these two. 
I'm gonna actually put these to into 5150 because 800 it doesn't need. There's a loop, but you know, there's not that much gain in the 800 that you know you would need to use. At least I don't see any reason to put anything in the loop except maybe delay or reverb. All right, so now I have the 5150 on no boost. The pre pre gain is at four, which is a lot. No overdrives or anything in front. And I have the noise suppressor now in the loop activated. When I bypass it, this kills the noise. And now when my delay is after these, so this is the send from the loop, this goes to the return of the loop. Now when I have the delay, It doesn't cut the tails, but it cuts the noise before. So when I stop playing, you know, it makes it silent, but the delay tails still continue. Volume is full. Cool. So this works like that, but check out what happens. I put the gain back to two and a half where it was. Now it reduces the gate, the noise, you know, from the preamp before the power amp. Because it's in the effect loop. Effect loop is, is between the amplifier's preamp section, which creates the gain, blah blah blah, and the power amp section, which amplifies that. So it's silent, but when I engage overdrive, it becomes noisy, because now I don't, the Zool is off, so there's no gate or noise suppressor, whatever you want to call it, to reduce the noise from the pedals. And now when the noisy pedal, it hits the amp, it amplifies the noise even more. So what I need to do is I need to make the gate tighter. But now it's so tight that it affects the sound, it's like... Good. cuts too much and the noise suppressor can't even handle that but it, pretty well so if you use overdriven amp but you don't use an overdrive you know this works pretty well add an overdrive it's noisy because the noise from the overdrive isn't tamed down by a gain. The preamp just amplifies that even louder. This is the reason I've never used any gates in the effect loop, because I like to use overdrives in front of the amp. And you know, these old marshals, they don't even have an effect loop. If you just use the amp gain and not overdrive, they'll, they'll do the job. So, but again, then when you're... If you use clean sound like this, it, it gates that clean sound a little bit too. My recommendation, how I've always used gate in front of the amp, so that the amp gets a, you know, there's so much gain that, you know, I think, it, yeah, so like I said, as little as I dare. Now it's completely dead, even though, all the pedals are on, but because the amp gets a noiseless signal, it won't amplify the noise, it just amplifies what I play. But if you feel that you want to have the gate in the loop, 
well, go ahead, but I have never found any use of a gate in the in the loop. Because now nothing is on. There's two overdrives on, completely silent. Because the amp doesn't get a noise, the signal that it's noisy, so it won't amplify the noisy signal. It will amplify the what I play, like that. And yeah, like I showed you, gate on, delay after, so it doesn't cut cut the the tails of delays and reverbs. That was it. Hopefully, you found this interesting and informative and maybe got some new ideas or ways to use noise gates or noise suppressor. Same thing, Boss calls it noise suppressor, ISP calls it noise reduction, but I guess the general, you know, word is gate. Noise gate. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye.